South Dakota governor and author of Not My First Rodeo, mm -hmm. Christy Noem, joins me. Nice to see you, Governor. Good to be with you, Coretta. Welcome Thanks back to Washington. Me. We've uh, interviewed you many times mm -hmm. when you were in the House and now the governor, of course, for some time. Um, mm -hmm. We talked about North Dakota. Yes. And, the, and the investment there. You're South Dakota. Uh, what's the story with South Dakota? Can the Chinese buy land in South Dakota? You know, they have the ability to do that, but there are limitations in state law as to how much they can buy. And I think that's very wise and something every state should be looking at. I think that even in this discussion that we're having right now, South Dakota will be continuing to restrict the ability of foreign countries to come and buy up our land, buy into our companies. We've had this discussion in the food processing business for quite some time. You know, a lot of our meat packers are foreign owned. And when you get concentration, they control our food supply. And part of this purchase of land is that long term agenda that China has. You know, they're not just investing in their military. They're investing in our food supply chain and they will control us if they control what goes on our grocery stores. Well, the conflict here is, first of all, it's near, it's near a military base mm -hmm. in North Dakota, not South Dakota, Correct. but North Dakota. Um, but the people who, some people in the community, even the mayor um, of, the, of the city wants it because it means jobs, it means mm -hmm. growth. But at the same time, when you find out that we can't do the same in China, I mean, if, you know, it's, it, it, it changes, I think, the discussion considerably. Everything's changed. Everything has changed in this country and worldwide the last several years. And you even look since this president's been in the White House, uh, we're more destabilized than we've ever been. He's jeopardized our energy supply. Our food supply is in a crisis situation. Uh, everything that is happening is a national security issue. So I've been warning about our food, uh, where it grows, how many people control it as a national security issue for over 15 years, but we're getting to a point now where I think the rest of America is waking up to that danger. All right, Governor, let's now turn to another topic, the mm -hmm. American, economy, American economy, which you, we touched on. President Biden says the U.S. is not in a recession mm -hmm. and that the country is, quote, on the right path. This despite a second straight quarter of negative GDP growth. This has been, that's been the technical definition of a recession. And mm -hmm. today, Biden speaking at the White House touted a strong economy. Both Chairman Powell and many of the uh, um, uh, significant uh, banking personnel and economists say we're not in a recession. We've created 9 million new jobs so far, just since we become president. Businesses are investing in America at record rates. Passing the CHIPS bill is going to put another $72 billion for incentives and tax credits to expand semiconductor production. And the Inflation Reduction Act will add another $370 billion in clean energy tax credits in reconciliation. That doesn't sound like a recession to me. Thank you very much. Governor, um, your thoughts on what the president said um, about the economy? Well, it sounded to me like he didn't even believe the own words that were coming out of his mouth. Uh, you know, redefining something doesn't change the situation. Uh, I think they're trying to redefine what's happening to our economy. You mean changing what, what the definition of recession is, yeah. when, when recession is really how you feel on your, in your own home and whether you can buy food and get gas. Yeah, that's exactly it. If you talk to any American out there right now, they can't afford to fill their gas tank all the way full. Their grocery cart's half full now by the time they reach the end of their budget. They're wondering when it's gonna get better and they see more and more regulation come out of Washington, D.C. Like this bill, continued overspending, tax cuts that are a result of the president going out there and saying he's going to increase taxes and continuing to push forward these regulations. If you look at what the EPA just said they were going to do, shut down coal-fired plants ahead of schedule before they can replace that energy, it's just going to make it harder and harder for these families to make their utility bills. So um, obviously the president has a bigger portfolio than, than, than a governor, but in, in South Dakota, mm -hmm. you've, you've had a pretty good economic picture. Why? Well, I think it's because of the decisions we've made. If you look at what we did very differently than a lot of other states recently, we never shut down our economy, never closed a single business throughout the pandemic. We have very low taxes, no income tax, no corporate income tax, no personal property tax. We only have a four and a half cent sales tax. Uh, we also never defined what an essential business was kept our regulations low, and we trusted people. Could you do that on, on a national level, though? I mean, it's, I mean, obviously, it's easier if you have a smaller portfolio, but could you do that on a national level? When I, when I ran for governor, I told people that South Dakota was small, we, but that allowed us to do things that maybe big states wouldn't have the confidence to tackle, that we could be a pilot project for what the rest of this country could do. And all we did was what conservative government 
has always said it believed. We did it in South Dakota. Now today, Greta, we have the best economy in the country. I have less than 700 people in the entire state of South Dakota that are on unemployment. You know, during the pandemic, we were the only state that did not take those elevated unemployment benefits. Uh, and now everybody's working. They've always wanted to get up every day and provide for their families. We have the fastest growing incomes in the country. Our and, incomes and, and have most gone people up. Are, and most people moving into your country, which they is are. a statistic you told me. Yeah, Everyone's you know, moving to South Dakota. Uh, yep, the second uh, highest state for in-migration, people picking up their families and moving to our state. They want to live somewhere they can be free. Governor Christy Noem, mm -hmm. thank you for joining me. Well, thank you, Greta. Hey, guys, it's Rob Carson. I want to tell you about the Patriot Gold Group. But first, let me tell you that the S&P has already lost $8.2 trillion in 2022. Did you know that? Peak inflation is not even hit despite the Fed rate hikes on groceries, on gas. You know it as well as I do. Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs are warning of another 20% drop. Inflation is winning in a knockout right now. The Fed is going to raise rates again at the end of July. Meanwhile, Goldman, Wells Fargo, and Bloomberg are all forecasting gold to surpass all-time highs. If you want to invest in gold, call 888-936-2373 now. Call the Patriot Gold Group today and ask about their No Fee for Life IRA. Sounds like a good deal, don't it? Here's the number, 888-936-2373, 888-936-2373 for the Patriot Gold Group. Hey.